Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my first full week of June wrap up. I'm just going to jump into my reading. So I finished three things this week. And the first thing I finished was An American Story by Kwame Alexander and artist is Dere Coulter. First off, the talking about the artwork, it's interesting. It's a mixed media. So in some instances you have just like charcoal drawings and others you have clay figures. And these are juxtaposed against one another in some different ways. I don't know if the artwork worked for me, but it was interesting. Now for the text of the story, when I started reading it, I thought I was reading a poem at first, just the rhythm of it. And then I realized it was trying to be a teacher talking to her students about slavery and the slave trade, but she feels uncomfortable. And I'm finding out at, at the end in the author's notes that the inspiration of this was Kwame Alexander talking to his daughter's fourth grade teacher. And she was uncomfortable talking about slavery. And so this is supposed to be like, even if you're uncomfortable, talk about it. I think that messaging behind it is really powerful, especially as this is June and we have Juneteenth, but the execution of this didn't work for me as a picture book. I think it would have been better as a verbal story with the images played behind. So I think that this was a mess for me, but I think this is something that everyone should pick up and read at least once because it is making really good points, things that we don't typically talk about in our school history classes, but we shouldn't be afraid to because it is a part of our history as a country and we need to be aware of that. We need to confront what is good as well as what is bad. Interesting read, an American story. Then I finished Hammer and Crucible by Cameron Cooper. And this is one of the self-published science fiction contest finalists. This is a space opera. So already it's like a leg up for me because I really enjoy space operas. And we are following Danny who has decided to grow old in a society where you can rejuvenate and stay young for decades. No, not decades, centuries. She is former military, though her family runs some trade. And so she has retired to a family's trade barge. And then her granddaughter comes and finds her. And her granddaughter accuses her of murdering the daughter's father, the Danny's son, the generation that came between. And things spiral from there. They go on an adventure and meet some interesting characters. I must say, I really love Danny and Juliana as characters. That dynamic between them was great, but I think that the other characters we meet along the way fell more into the stereotypical space opera, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I did really like Lythian. That character was such a treat for me but how they meet Lythian is kind of a convenient moment. And it, it gets explained at the end of the book, but I think this is where the, the book struggled, is instead of having Danny find out what was going on through things that are happening, she got told what was happening at the end conflict. And that's not my favorite storytelling setup. And then the book very abruptly ends like a chapter after that. I was expecting a little more cool down. So it's, it's a very interesting one. I'm intrigued to pick up the next in the series, but I can't say that this was a perfect execution. I will have more thoughts coming up later because I will be doing a review for this book. And the last book I finished this week is The Monsters We Defy by Leslie Penelope. This is something I picked up earlier this year. 
This is a historical fantasy with a heist. And this follows Claire, Claire Johnson, who I found out upon finishing the book was a real person. But this is a fictional account of what happened after the historical account. And I found it very fun and interesting. I mean, these have, if you're looking for a found family and characters that you're just going to love, like Penelope nails it. I also love all the history references that are dropped, especially because I'm not familiar with Washington, D.C. And this is set during Prohibition. So there's a lot of world building. Like you can see where the history is added, or at least I could. And I loved it. And then Penelope did one of my favorite things where she cited some of her, her historical book sources at the end. And I love it when authors do that because I like reading history books as well. So I've gone and put them on my list of books to check out in the future. This is very much a book that is talking about black culture, especially during this time period. So the premise of this book is Clara can see spirits. She was born at a crossroads and she helps people make deals with these enigmas is what they're called. But when you get a deal with them, you get a charm, which is the thing you're looking for. And then you get a trick. And they give an example pretty early on in the book of what that is and how, you know, the tricks can mess with your life as much as the charms can help your life, supposedly. Anyway, one of the enigmas is after a ring and promises Claire that she will take away her charm and trick if she obtains it. So that's where you get into the heist. And along with the heist, there is a mystery going on which is then related to the object that they are wanting to get. Clara grudgingly enlists her roommate and another man who has the charm to take on different personas and then has a run-in with a potential love interest who then him and his cousin get dragged into this as well. So very much, like I said, found family, lovable characters. You get a lot of historical references of what was going on at the time this was wonderful. I loved it. I've always heard great things about Penelope's writing and I look forward to going back and reading her backlist now. So what I am currently reading now is Percival Ghent and the Conspiracy of Days by Drew Melbourne. This is another of our self-published science fiction contest finalists. I've read the first chapter so far and it seems like this is going to be a humorous sci-fi and that's all I know. Like I said, I just started the, well, I've read the first chapter and then I have started the second chapter and that's as far as I've gotten. So that will be my focus this week. I, cause I have three books left to read for this contest and I really want to finish them before the deadline. And I've been slowly working my way up to the longer books. So if I can read that this week, I can read the next one next week. And then the last book is a chunker and I hope to have like two weeks to read that one. So that is that goal. And for my physical TBR, I, I am not certain what I'm picking up next. I am back to mood reading. For my writing wrap up, I did re write a little this week. I was in a writing mood and I have a series where the first book I referred to is Music Story. And I'm planning to have four books in this quartet. And I started writing book three. I haven't finished book one. But for some reason, book two and book three keep calling me. They're very different. They have characters from book one, but then they're doing other things. So I was like, you know what? It's not going to hurt me to write this or to just start a first draft of it that's just how my brain works as I jump and to me this is one whole big series and so my brain is jumping in and out of all the different books that I wrote and I had a great time doing it. That is the thing to take away here. I know this next weekend is the Storyteller Hearth's Weekend Relay. So a bunch of people sprinting to, for writing and productivity if you're not a writer. I'm hoping to jump in and visit some of these sprints that just also happens to be when my city is doing a Juneteenth celebration and my 
we volunteered to be there to work a table. And for other media, continuing to watch elementary on my own, I've gotten into season three and I'm like, oh yeah, this is when they added Kitty and then Joan is mad at Sherlock because he left for a while and now he's back and I'm not sure how I feel exactly about that. I mean, I've watched this before, but I think this is kind of where I felt a little bit cooler or where I started to kind of disengage from the series because that original magic wasn't there anymore. And my husband and I are also watching MasterChef. They are just started airing the newest season. We like our cooking shows. And this one has always been a favorite for us, getting to see the creativity that people have, especially like when they're like, oh yeah, I've only been cooking for three years. Here's something beautiful. I'm like, hmm, that's really nice. Again, it's always balance when I am watching a lot of things, I'm not reading as much. When I'm reading more, I'm not watching as much. Uh, for things coming up, you will be getting that review for Hammer and Crucible. I mean, it might come out before this. I don't remember exactly how I have the videos scheduled. I don't think I have otherwise anything super big. Are you doing any readathons here in June? Or are you going to be like me and you're just going to mood read? love to know. Thank you and have a great day.